Welcome to Be A Month Old, Unlocking the Path to Success. This podcast unravels the hidden stories behind exceptional leadership to excel in your own leadership endeavors. Brought to you by the collaboration of PMI Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg. Subscribe to PM Untold today and join us as we redefine leadership one story at a time. Welcome everyone to PM Untold episode two. Today, our theme is project management for the younger generation and our guest is a special speaker, Chris Kindermans. Chris is a global project and portfolio economical professional, a board member at PMI Org and PMI EF, an organization near and dear to my heart, and the past president at PMI Belgium chapter. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Liz, uh, for this very nice introduction, but I'm only a board member of the Education Foundation. I'm not a board member of uh, PMI, just to make it very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Could you please tell the audience something more about yourself? Well, what do you want to know? Do I have a couple of hours? No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, I'm, um, let, let me put it that way, very, very clear. I'm an economist from a background. That's to make sure that a project manager should not be, by definition, an IT person or an engineer or, or a scientific person, you know. I basically, uh, it, it's an economist. So I'm from a background, I'm an applied economist. I'm a manager, if, if I could say so. And secondly, well, I've been a project manager since uh, almost my entire life, I, I would say for the last 40 years, 4-0. And I've been working as a project manager all over the world in all different types of, of activities, you know, uh, going from construction over IT, over admin projects, over plenty uh, international projects, World Bank projects. And since um, 2000, I'm 2000. I'm a certified project manager. I'm a PMP from 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 PMI from the institute, and uh, so that means it's now 23 years that that I'm I'm certified and uh, and. Uh, I've been working in 75 countries or in more than 75 countries. So, so I think uh, I've been an economical project manager, like you said, uh, having worked all over the world in all different kind of sectors, you know, and I'm very, 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 very much involved in, in PMI for the last 20 years. I've been working in different kind of roles uh, inside PMI. And now in this moment, I'm a board member of the Educational Foundation. Excellent. Well, I've read your full CV and I can say it's amazing. If you haven't checked it out, we'll share the link for Chris's LinkedIn account so that you can also follow him. Chris, what got you into the project management associated game? Well, it, 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 it's by accident. It's, it's, it's by accident that I, I came into the project management environment long, 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 long time ago when the animals were still speaking. Um, I was, uh, I was working in the banking sector. And at a given point of time, I was a little bit fed up about what I was doing in the banking sector. So I said, uh, on that moment, and I think it was the early 80s, I was saying, well, I'm now for something completely different. So I go into the IT business. This, like I said before, I'm an economist. I'm not an IT person. I, I, can, I cannot uh, develop more than 10 lines of basic programming, you know, that's about all my knowledge that I have in the IT, but I wanted to go and work in the IT sector. So I said, okay, but other people say, you don't know anything about IT. How are you going to sell projects uh, or how are you going to sell activities into the, the IT sector? And then at that moment, I said, well, the only thing is I, I was coming with solutions and the solution uh, to a problem uh, is usually done through a project. And as a consequence, because I didn't know how to program it, uh, well, I decided to go and sell and develop projects, you know. So, and that's the start of my career in uh, in project management. And then step by step, I've been working in uh, in, in in companies like uh, Logica, which is pretty much known in in the Netherlands, and was pretty much known in the Netherlands. And and I rolled into project management, and I've been my entire life over there. Isn't that amazing? Like me, you're what I would call an accidental project manager, but obviously very good at it. So let's get on to our next question for our listeners. What would you say is the most challenging experience you've faced in your career so far, and how did you overcome it? Well, there are there, there were 
plenty, plenty of, of challenging uh, activities, you know. Um, the most challenging in the early days, nowadays it's a little more easy, but the most challenging is to have a um, project uh, which is run all over the world with people coming from different places in the world, uh, speaking different languages, and having a different cultural background, a real different cultural background. PMI is working all over the world, and we are all certified on the basis of the same book, uh, the PM book. And uh, so we could imagine that the technical knowledge which we, which we had was all on the same level, but the moment when we were sitting around the table, a way of talking, we didn't have done all these kind of programs on that moment, so we were traveling a lot. Uh, on that moment, it is very challenging to have two Indian people with a Norwegian person, with an American person, an Belgian, and someone from South Africa and South America to work, uh, to have them working together with their own views of the world. And uh, the core solution was having a lot of understanding on how the different cultures were working and built upon that to develop a proper communication. For a good project manager, communication, I would be saying, is the, is the key word. It's the key word to, to sort out a lot of solutions. So uh, we should not be too technical, but we should be human, human concerned, human driven. I love that because I too have worked with lots of cultures and the bottom line is communication can break through all the boundaries as long as you respect the culture as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. For sure. I agree. So I think that's a great message for our listeners. And related to that, are you finding, just an off-piece question, are you finding that the focus on AI is a little bit dehumanizing project management? No, it's, it, it is. Uh, on this moment, the focus on, on AI, and as I said, I've been working for a long time also in the IT industry. At a given point of time, we were calling this expert systems, you know. And AI is a buzzword now in this moment. So we have to be careful because AI is not existing as such. There are different kind of aspects. There are different kind of components. So uh, your question, it might take me three hours to, to, to address this, but, but just do this. In, in a general point, the, the fact of life is that the AI environment, be it in visuals, be it in text, be it in whatever, is based upon what other human beings have been putting somewhere in whatever kind of a system or of several systems or whatever you wish, wish to call it. So AI with some algorithms is picking out what the person who has been making the algorithm uh, has, has been finding out and, and, and brought this all together. Um, a project manager will stay a project manager. Um, sometimes, and, and, and I'm not joking, sometimes making a huge mistake is more solving out problems inside a project than uh, having it done in the right way. So the question would be on that moment, would machines be capable of making huge mistakes? That the bottom line is, the moment that AI would have a real impact on what project management is doing, that would be on the moment that the machines are start that, that they are starting thinking of themselves. One day I read a story, and I'm not sure if it is true the story you know, but but just as an example, was I read somewhere that two machines, two computers were talking to each other in a language that they have created. And on that moment, well, AI will not be uh, a problem for project managers, um, AI will be a problem for human mankind by that. Now, I, I, I don't fear. It will be a help to the project managers, like it will be a help to, to plenty of kind of environments, but uh, for the time being, it's not more than that. Thank you for that segue, because I think it's a really important topic for us to understand. But, you know, you've talked about some of your challenges, which were people-oriented, and I think that's what we've all experienced as project managers. I think you just have more experience in that space. But what would you say the most rewarding experience you've had so far? Because it sounds like you've had a lot. Which one would you pick out as the most rewarding? So outcome-based rewards where you had maybe had to work very hard, but you had a great outcome you could be proud of for years to come, something like that, where you had a, a reward from the experience, you could say, and an outcome that matched that. Basically, 
then and you maybe you will it will be hard to 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 believe it is uh and, and I will not mention it you know because I have to be very careful of what I'm saying because I've been uh, a cupboard full of um, non-disclosure agreements uh, and and but let me say a company why uh, uh, that company why the whole entire project we screwed it up you know you, you would say is this rewarding no but from screwing up if i can use this word uh, from screwing up this project you know we have been learning so much you know for the years to come that that it was it was uh, um let me say a quite an experience so it was rewarding but the outcome was not rewarding but it's 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 very important that and and, and i feel this for for project managers project managers are basically learning from mistakes you, you, you know being a pmp like i am and uh, you know that means that you studied the pm walk and 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 you proved a number of things and you passed an exam and and so on and so what uh that's one thing but only the moment when you, when you have this as a project manager when you start working and you're making mistakes you know we are human beings at that moment uh any kind of a project big or small you know uh is rewarding because the outcome is we understand what we did wrong as well as building a team as well as finding the solution as well as interacting with the person who said what we had to do you know uh, what you learn uh, almost project management is kind of a lifelong learning i'm still learning on this moment when i'm doing things and i'm 74 years old so i love that 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 will actually segue beautifully into our next question but let me just say i completely agree with you that it is the act of learning from mistakes not the mistakes themselves which are the reward and it sounds like that was your ultimate outcome. It might have brought your team together. It certainly raised everyone's game. You now have battle scars that help you for the next war you'll fight if you want to call project management sometimes that. And Absolutely. so those things equipped you. And that's one of the things that I think this podcast really does is help equip maybe younger, maybe less experienced project managers with the lessons learned so that Maybe they'll still make the mistake, but at least when they do, they'll say, ah, oh, yeah, Chris, I remember that. <laughs> Absolutely. It's still on this moment, you know, there are people who said, Chris, 10 years ago during a course or when I was working with you, 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 you told me this. It's still true. Lately, I've been thinking about it and shit. We, well, that was what has been said at that moment. So that, that's also rewarding people coming back and saying, well, 10 years ago, you said, you know, and yet yeah, sure. Not how I experienced it. Yeah. So with this breadth of experience, this lifelong experience in the project world, you're really well suited then to move into PMIEF, Project Management Institute Education Foundation. Yep. Tell us more about that. Well, you know, what a lot of people probably don't, um, don't know is uh, certainly from the PMI community is that well, the Institute for itself exists now, how much, 55, 57 years, something like that. Uh, that that's when PMI was created. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an old uh, kind of uh, organization. More than 30 years ago, three zero years ago, the foundation was created. Um, PMIF was created more than 30 years ago. Now, right from in the beginning, it was an educational foundation aimed at all different types of um, organizations like NGOs and so not not um, commercial kind of organizations that were usually using project management, but other ones. Like uh, we were working with the Lions clubs, for instance, or, or, or you know, the uh, Rotarians or, or so on to say, oh, you, you are organizing fundraising uh, activities. L let us teach you how you can set this up uh, project based, you know, so you, you could do it in, in the right way. And 12 years ago, when, when the major tsunami hit uh, the Aceh province and so, um, PMI said, we uh, are not going to send uh, money over there to Indonesia. Uh, we're going to send uh, 60 project managers and uh, um, we will pay for it, you know, and they're going to go and help the people to create it. From that came uh, another organization, which is lesser known in the community, 
it's uh, Project Managers Without Borders, uh, which is fairly similar to uh, uh, Doctors Without Borders and so on as well. So um, I've been involved um, as uh, even when, when I was the, 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 the president of the chapter in Belgium and afterwards, always, and this is how PMI is working, PMI, something central is done, and then they are reaching out to the chapters because that one be one of the messages uh, that I will give towards the end and all, all the time to the chapters and the people from PMI and to please become volunteers, you know, because it's on the basis of volunteers. It's a volunteer. I'm in the board of directors, but I'm a volunteer in, in, the, in the board of directors. But uh, a number of years ago, uh, about four or five years ago, we, we have been, because it, it went too broad, um, we, we have been scaling down the, the, the foundation to basically concentrate on, on young people. And when we say uh, young people, it's basically uh, the secondary type of schools, uh, which is from the age of, of 12, 13 to 18. Uh, but when you would be talking to Walter Genevri in, in, in Italy, he'd say, you know, we can do this from the from first class, from seven years old, you know, and he has been writing books about it. And, and it's quite, quite right what he has been saying. Um, we have been now concentrating uh, on what we would be calling the upper secondary class. In, in So that's the last three years of the secondary school, you know. These are the people from, let's say, 15 to 18 years old. And uh, PMI has, has been writing a strategic plan by, by saying, okay, we're going to concentrate on the young people, on the youth, and what we will be doing is we will enable youth to realize their potential and transform their lives through project management. That is basically the mission of, of the foundation. And that's the, the, the elements that we are working on. Because if, if you go back to PMI, you, you see inside PMI, you have the talent triangle. In the very, 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 very early days, uh, with the PMBOK, we have been concentrating on what we would be calling technical project management. Okay, but then at a given point of time, yes, but we, we need to have some for 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 the project manager. They they have also basically also with communication and 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 all these kind of elements. We have to look for what we would be calling nowadays power skills, but before it was called soft skills. You know, how do you negotiate? How do you communicate? How you deal with problems? Who do you make decisions? And all these kind of elements. And then a number of years ago, I think it's about 10, 15 years ago, we said, well, no, we have to add some business acumen uh, and to say, make the people understand um, how projects fit into an organization, uh, how they create value. And that's what we have been concentrating upon the last years. Yeah. How do we concentrate upon on value? And that was done when program management and portfolio management and, and, and PMOs and, and so were coming into, into the organization. Now, the point is that we concentrate on young people and we go in for our mission through the power skills. Through the, um, we, we, we go in through the so-called soft skills that used to be, to be called soft skills, like communicate and decision making is that, that we say, young people, um, how do you stand on your feet you know, in, in life? And yes, we, we tell you also a little bit on the technical project management. How do you organize something? And we are working a lot nowadays in uh, in, in in schools. Um, in a number of schools, they have in the last couple of years, they are making mini enterprises. We are teaching those who are dealing with mini enterprises, we are teaching them how do you create an enterprise? Uh, what is your scope? How are you going to pay for it? What will be the cost? You know, why when? you should be achieving some things like and the basic elements that we have on project management. So a lot of soft skills plus the basics of project management, that is nowadays what we are dealing with in the, in the educational foundation. And we are working on, on, three, on three elements. One is we create products, which are as well training courses as uh, uh, small products and how they have to manage projects, how they have to come to decisions. We are not doing this directly. We are doing this to wise and peace, uh, what, what, we, what we are calling. So the, 
the youth uh, service nonprofits uh, who are concentrated, like here in Europe, which is well known. We are working together with GA Europe, which is Junior Achievements Europe, you know, a European organization. We are also working with F1 in in in, in UK. Uh, we are working with uh, the people from Special Olympics, uh, not so much for from the Olympics, but but teach those next to the fact that yes, on the Special Olympics we we are good, but also we know what is project management, what is management, and all these kind of elements. And third, what we are doing is the third element of our strategic plan is. How are we studying, how having a view after one year, two years, five years, 10 years, what is remaining of what has been taught to these young people? Uh, how well is this um, that, uh, included in, in, in their life like that? And that, that's what we are currently doing. I love that. So we, I think we both agree. Project management is a work skill. You have certain skills you can use at work, but it's really a life skill. It can help you find purpose in life and then execute to realize that purpose. Absolutely. That's a, that's a, that's a very good way of putting it all together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So from that perspective, you've talked about how you're helping these various NGOs and organizations. It's clear there's a huge benefit to them. What would you say is the benefit to the young people we're targeting themselves. So what would you have as your selling point to young people interested in thinking, hmm, I wonder if I can find out what PMI has to offer? What would you say is that key message for them in terms of the importance of project management? We we tend not to use too much the words project management when we are talking with these young people. We are creating environments. Uh, we, are, we are telling them, how would you be sorting out this uh, when you're in a conflict situation, how would we be dealing with it? How are you uh, sure that if you have a bright idea, that you will be able to achieve it? it, it it's something along the lines like you can do this and you can do that, and we're going to teach you this, and 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 so on and so what. And then at the end, you're saying, oh, and by the way, um, this is what we are calling project management. We think we know what project management is, and it's only 3% of the world. Uh, when you're talking in companies and so on, you know, most managers, senior managers, uh, board of directors, they have no clue uh, of, of what really project management is all about. But, but that's, that's another story. Um, I'm quite happy to, to, to have a full talk about it in our home. Um, the fact is that, that we, we give components to the young people. We, we, we call it inside PMI enablements. And and that that is this is how, how we are doing through those organizations through Wise and Peace, um, like this year we will be coming close on a worldwide basis, we will be coming close to two million enablements, which means we have been with the foundation, we have been quote unquote distributing uh, the knowledge uh, all over the world through this Wise and Peace, and we had. Two million young people from the age that I've been mentioning who have been uh, involved in project management type of training, activities, uh, situations uh, where we have been giving elements to help them to find their way in how they would be dealing it and that they can take this with them uh, to, to their real life, if, if you can say it. To, to their... Absolutely. You know, I love that. Two million lives affected by the foundation. Last year, it was also another two million, you know. So it... Wow. So it's it's making an impact. And, you know, I believe that the motto, you could say, is about doing social good, which is clearly the case. What other kinds of impact on social good and youth project management skills have the organization realized over the years? Well, um, on this moment is... We are revisiting our strategic plan. One of the components of the strategic plan, you know, the Education Foundation is a 501c, uh, which, which is a which is a separate type of organization than, than PMI. That's that's why we have a board of directors, and that I'm sitting in, in the board of directors, because to a certain extent, it's two separate organizations. But all the money that the foundation is spending is all coming from PMI, you know. So so it's a it, it's very closely related. It, it's only, it's it's almost from a legal point of view, two separate organizations, but we we are working together. Now, 
the part what I can say is that we are feeling that we have been spreading also on the Indication Foundation ourselves too thin all over the world. You know? Because we have limited funds. Uh, last year, um, 22, we have been distributing to Wise and Peace $10 million last year. So, and, and I think for this year, well, we will be close to $6 million. And for next year, we, we are foreseeing a budget again like that. So, so it's, 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 it, it's, it's not peanuts that, 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 that we are giving to the different kind of organization. Uh, but we just want to make sure, yeah, we have uh, more than 2 million enablements, but we want to be sure that, that it's not just uh, for for the two months that the young people are confronted with it, but that it stays, quote-unquote, in their life. So therefore, we have our own element that we are doing the study work to see how we could do it. It's not easy to, 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 to study it. But the second thing is that we felt, well, we are, we are going, well, it's good to have two million enablements, but if this is two million enablements who are just scratching the surface... Maybe it's not uh, money which is well spent. So, so we are reconsidering it, PMI and, and the foundation. And, and basically what will be announced, uh, and coming back to, to your social impact um, uh, environment, uh, it has been decided, and, and I don't think I tell something which, which cannot be communicated, but formally and in detail it will be communicated by, by the board uh, uh, next year. We will be concentrating on the strategic development goals from, from the United Nations, the SDGs, and we will be concentrating on SDG 4 and SDG 8. These are the elements, and all the social impact activities from PMI will be concentrated on, on, on the 4 and on the 8. That, that, is, that is what we will be going for. Well, there's no doubt that PMI members can really be both proud of the fact that we have a social good or charity arm of our project management work. Let's call it the social impact side of, yep. of uh, PMI. And so one of the things about focus, as in any situation, is you can make sure those dollars are well spent and have the most impact, social impact, for members. So members, you should feel good about that. And what I'd like to ask as a wind-up question, as a summary, is what message do you have for PMI members, project managers, and the general population about the future of social impact, young people, and PMI? Well, f f first of all, just as a sideline, we, we have seen from uh, surveys and from research that a lot of people are uh, becoming a member of PMI uh, because we are doing these kind of activities in the educational foundation. That, that's one thing. Uh, secondly, when, when I'm looking at it and some people who know me, uh, and what I'm defending for a large part, and I'm not going back to the Middle Ages, but I would say something on the Middle Ages, is in the Middle Ages there were guilds, you know, the guilds of whatever it is. And, and I like to think of, and that, that's important for the future, um, I like to think of the PMI environment as a guild, where on one side we have a, a scale of uh, project managers who are learning it. Yeah, the basic is like, like the stone carvers, you know, you know how to carve a stone, but before you, you become a master stone carver, you have to make a number of mistakes and that, and doing kind of thing. That, that, that's one line. And on the other side, the guilds were also doing a lot of social good and social impact, if you look at it in, in for, for their community. That, that is the part for, for, for the Education Foundation. Next year, um, the Education Foundation and Project Managers Without Borders will be merged. On. So, what is the core message? The whole system of PMI, and certainly the foundation, is based upon volunteers. And, and the core message is, if you feel something for these kind of messages, if you feel that yourself, you would like to contribute to the social impact of, of the organization, the core message is, become a volunteer. You know, uh, we, we have the system, we, we, we have a, a good approach of doing it, 
well, you know, if you feel like that and you would like to do something as a project manager, also other people, but as a project manager, basically for, for, for the community, we have the instruments, you know, please volunteer in each chapter, stand up and say, hey, you guys, uh, we are here. Just give us all the materials that we can do what, what, what you're doing here in your own kind of environment. And with pleasure, we will be distributing this and, uh, and, and, and guiding and, and giving our knowledge and uh, our knowledge. It is our common knowledge of the PMI community. We, we, we are a great community. Volunteer. And don't wait till someone asks you. Stand up and say, hey, I would like to do something. I have to say, as a former director of PMI's Academic Outreach and Education Foundation, I did that for four years. I have to say my team and I felt it was some of the most rewarding work we ever did. And as you said about mastery and apprenticeship, the fact is iron sharpens iron. And when you have a situation where you're actually teaching project management, you will become a more competent presenter. You'll become a more capable project manager. It really is great for you. And who doesn't love giving back to the next generation? It's been very rewarding for me and my team to be part of that. So I have to say, we I agree, the PMI EF website, if you're interested, can give you a lot more information about PMI. And ask your local chapter if they have a PMI or Education Foundation situation going on with academic outreach so that you can take part. You'll be surprised at the amount of reward you'll get from it and what you'll learn. So I want to thank you, Chris, for joining it was my pleasure, Liz. Oh, this was such an inspirational conversation. I've really enjoyed today. So I did uh, to talk to you, you know. It's, uh, you see, like volunteers from PMI, when we are talking to each other, and if we can now broadcast it to the outside world, you know, we try to, to bring our, our belief and, and our enthusiasm to, uh, to, to the other people. It's a great organization, and we do great things. We just don't talk about it enough to the outside world. I feel... Uh, to outside of PMI. We we love each other, but we should show the, the outside world, you know, what is PMI standing for? That we are not doing enough. It's, it's, yeah. it's a real community and it's about people who don't just have the role of project manager. It's a very broad experience range and people who aren't in the professional project management, but are adjacent or need those skills because as we said, Project management are life skills, but they're also work skills in a variety of ways. So yeah. if you're interested in joining PMI, check out PMI.org. I think that's our key message today. And also, of course, check out PMIEF, the social impact side of PMI, doing good around the world, together with Project Managers Without Borders. Anyone who is interested can, and they don't find the right way in their chapter, you know, send me a mail, you know, I will be pleased to help them. And as a reminder, if you want to get a hold of Chris, his LinkedIn details will be in the info box below this podcast. And I want to thank you all, listeners, for listening to our podcast, PM Untold, Episode 2 with Chris Kindermans. And I want to say we'll see you next month. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to PM Untold. From groundbreaking innovations to nurturing high-performing teams, we are your go-to resource for mastering leadership. For questions or suggestions, contact us at Podcast at pmi.lu. Subscribe to PM Untold today as we redefine leadership one story at a time. Stay inspired.